Thanks for tuning in to another starting lineup report on Prime Sports Network. I'm your host, Greg DePama. We've got the speed charts for qualifying and practice. Gives us a better idea to see what we can do regarding the odds change and so forth uh, for the race coming up tomorrow, the road course playoff race in New York. Don't forget, check out the show, CJ and I recorded earlier in the week it's available on demand here on prime sports network you can also check out the full-length video that includes f1 coverage that's available on our mystery caution motorsports channel all right well there you go ross chastain there's the dead giveaway how in the world did ross chastain end up on the pole i don't think anybody knows i don't know but if you listen to what we said on Tuesday, being on the pole is not necessarily a good thing. And that is because only one pole sitter has won at Watkins Glen since 2008. And I'm not quite sure Ross Chastain is going to be the one to break it. So, as far as that trend. What we do know, though, is that there are some trends that may be broken. If you're just taking a look at who is on the top three rows. That's because the top three rows is very important as far as the trends at Watkins Glen. 12 of the 13 winners, the last 13, have started in the top three rows. And six straight winners have started in the top two rows. So let's take a look. All right. So we know Chastain is first. Who's second? Another driver who's had a very disappointing season, yet he's still alive. Martin Truex Jr. How about that? Now, the difference between Ross Chastain and Martin Truex Jr.? Ross Chastain was really fast in practice, too. He was second fastest. Truex? Eh, not so good. Middle of the pack. Which is kind of more like the way Martin Truex season has been. Then, we've got Mr. Road Course himself, Van Gisbergen. Matter of fact, Van Gisbergen had... The second best combination of, of qualifying and practice behind Chastain. Third on that list was Austin Sindrick. You see him right there in fifth. Sindrick, seventh in practice, fifth here in qualifying, and also the top forward. Bowman, in case you did watch the show we did, that's my long shot pick from earlier this week. So Bowman ends up as my long shot play, and he's off to a good start qualifying-wise. Now, not very fast in practice. As a matter of fact, there are several that we're going to get into that either was slow in practice, fast in qualifying, or vice versa. So that's going to make it tricky to figure out here. But, you know, trends are trends. They're not gospel. But 12 out of 13, that's as good as it gets. I mean, obviously, 13 out of 13 would be nice. But 12 out of 13 makes it really hard to bet against anyone in the top six. But we'll try to see if we can uh, figure some things out here. All right, AJ, by the way, as you can see, he's sixth. Another driver that did not back it up in practice. Rounding out the top 10, and you got Joey Logano, who was one of the other solid practice and qualifying drivers. Logano was just as fast pretty much in qualifying. It was in practice regarding rank. Seventh here, sixth in practice. And then you got Suarez, followed by Gregson and McDowell. So where'd Gregson come from? Well, if you look at his Xfinity career, he's been okay. I mean, it's, it's not like it's, it, 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 it wows you or anything like that. He's never won. But in the Xfinity series, he has finished in the top 10 all three, three appearances. And he does have a couple of top fives. So this has actually been a pretty good track. Excuse me, uh, one, top, one top five. It's been a pretty good track for Gregson but to ask him to win a race and he's and he's not even in the top see in my opinion if if you're not in the top three rows so if you're not in the top six then and this this counts for Joey Logano too I don't really care if you're seventh tenth fifteenth or twentieth you're just not in the top six and 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 you're just not in the trend so I'll take you from anywhere all right so that's something that I mean that's something I'm gonna do whether you want to do that uh, obviously that's completely up to you Everybody has a different way of going about things, but, you know, that's just the way that I handle it, and uh, we'll find out whether or not, matter of fact, you know what, let me double check, just want to make sure, yes, Joey Logano.
So this is interesting, okay? So Joey Logano, if you're going to go back and use these trends, 12 out of the last 13, Logano is the only driver, 12 out of 13, that did not fit, that did not start in the top six spots, the top two rows, or I should say the top three rows, the top six spots. All right? He's the only one, and he's starting here seventh. Now, then, back in 2015, he started 16th. All right? My point was not that I don't like Lugano. I do. But my point was just, hey, I don't really care if you're the seventh driver or the tenth driver. If you're not in those top three rows, then the trends are off. Because, look, Lugano started 16th. So, you see, he wasn't seventh or eighth or ninth or tenth. So, um, let's, let's find out about some of those other drivers. Let's find out if there are other drivers outside even the top 10 that we should be taking a look at. And right away, you got to look at these, these uh, first four drivers. All right. You've got Byron, Briscoe, Bush, and Elliott. Now, Byron, uh, this is CJ's top pick, and I liked him a lot as well. He's the defending champ, and why not? Especially considering the fact that I think you're going to get pretty decent odds on Byron. Um, and I say decent, okay, because I think he was 8-1 to one early this morning. And, I'm, and 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 this is this is actually working in your favor if you like Byron. I'm going to try to see if I can get the odds before we close, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to go ahead and pop that up. Let's see, see if I what I get here out of my sports book. I don't. Yeah, it, that, we don't have any odds on the race again. I, I don't know why. They do, I, I just don't understand why they do this. I don't know what they're waiting for, but no odds yet on the race, so we just got to go with what we have. Okay, so anyway, Bush, a definite play in my mind. Uh, he was my second choice uh, uh, the other day, and he was very similar in practice, 13th and 12th. So that's just been about what Kyle's done, even all season and even recently when he's upped his game. And you're going to get good odds. I believe he was 18-1 to 1 this morning. So uh, I like the fact that Kyle's 13th. I, I know I want that driver in the top six, but if he's in the top six, he's going to enter the odds are going to drop. And, you know, I'd rather take Kyle at 13. I just would. And Chase Elliott's going to be dangerous. Now, Elliott is different. So, you know, Elliott is even more so that I'm like, oh, look, he was 9-1 to one the other day. None of his practice runs or qualifying runs were inside the top 10. So I'm probably going to get 10 or 12-1 to one on, on Elliott. I mean, 8-9 at, at worst. And Elliot's really good here. So there are some options to jump all over. And even though you might be a little bit perplexed of what's going on here, I think it's still going to be something that could benefit us. And then take a look at the rest. Reddick is 16th. Bell is 17th. Look at Kyle Larson. He's starting 20th. Hamlin, 22nd. And really no other big surprises. Ryan Blaney starting 30th is a little bit of a surprise. So, but he made up for it in practice. Okay, so, so that's what happened in qualifying. Now, here's practice. Now, here's Reddick making up for it. Okay, so he was 16th in qualifying, and he jumps all the way to fastest in practice. And Reddick, because of that, his odds are going to probably end up a little bit shorter than Chase Elliott's. But he was 9-1 to one on Tuesday. And if he drops to like six to one, seven to one, I'm not going to go for it. And why? Because he's he's raced here three times and he has three top tens, and, and and he hasn't had like a really dominating performance. And we went over uh, all of the the history of uh, road course records on Tuesday show as well. So you really want to check that out. Um, I, I let CJ do a lot of the Watkins Glen stuff. I handled more of the history of, of road courses. And we know Reddick is an excellent road course driver. I mean, he, he, he has a couple of wins. Uh, he's got 13 top 10s out of 18, six top fives. Uh, but he's never won at Watkins Glen. He's never had a top five at Watkins Glen. As I said, just two laps led at Watkins Glen, 171 laps led. In 18 races, but only two at Watkins Glen. And his finishes this year are fifth and eighth. So it's not like he came into this race, uh, uh, this road course race, on a, like a high. He's been a lot hotter 
in seasons before. Now, here's the difference is, is Tyler Reddick is having a great season. So that's why if I'm still getting a good number on Reddick, I'm taking it. But I'm not taking it if they're going to shortchange me into like him being one of the co-favorites because he was fastest in practice. That's just me. Okay? And, and he's driving a Toyota. Now, let's, let's keep this in mind. It's okay, but you're not driving a Chevy. And you want to be driving a Chevy. You're, the Chevy's going to have the edge. Five Chevys were in the top eight in qualifying, including the pole sitter. Even three of the top four were Chevys. Where was Toyota? Well, hey, Martin Truck Jr. was second. Yeah, but you know what the next Toyota was? 16th. That was Tyler Reddick. One Toyota in the top 15 in qualifying. Practice. Chevy, three of the top four. Yeah, but wait a second. Toyota had the fastest driver. It was Reddick. Look at him. Yeah, but you know what? Toyota, only two drivers in the top 14 in practice. So can Reddick get it done and win? Absolutely. But I want fair odds for me to wager on him. But Chevy's definitely the manufacturer to beat here. And then again, just take a look at some of these slower... Well, 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 first take a look at some of the drivers that made up for it in practice. Well, I shouldn't say that because practice was first. But some of the drivers that got off to good starts. And here's the thing you have to think about too. Is when practice is first, and let's say you see Ryan Blaney's eighth, and Larson's third, and Hamlin's fifth. You know, you have to be wondering about the strategy that's going on here. Redick is first. Because practice, obviously, what's the difference between practice qualifying? Well, it's a longer run. Even though it, it's only like an extra lap or two because it's a road course. I mean, look at some of these laps here. It's still a good, a good number compared to qualifying. You got a lap in qualifying, maybe maybe two or three, whatever. Let's see, let's see what the average was here at qualifying. Do they have it? All right, they don't. Okay, screw that. But bottom line is, is you're out there for a longer period of time in practice because that's the closest simulation to the, to the actual race. Even though, and it's not surprising, as you can see here, most of the top speeds were done early, like in qualifying, right? So there is that to consider. But the fact is, is that you do have an opportunity to screw around with the car after you've felt, okay, here, we've had a nice setup here in practice. This is a longer run. This is, you know, whether our, and it also obviously depends. How far did our car drop off? Hey, we had a really good speed here on lap two. Put me on the, put me on the fastest car. Well, how did you do the entire way? And unfortunately, if you take a look at it here, we don't have the same num uh, the same statistics we used to have. That, that was good. It was the old days. The thing I, I, I did like, even though I don't want to go back to the old days of four practices and all this other stuff, is that in the old days when they used to have like three or four practices on, on most uh, racetracks, they used, it really mattered who had the best 10-lap average. That was, that was really important. And that was helpful. But we didn't really get that here anymore. So, But I'm okay with that. I prefer this... Uh, style this rule change and i think it's made it a lot better as we've gone over before it's even the playing field a lot better uh and I, and I like that okay anyway let's move on so who else made up for it or dropped well briscoe dropped the 14th truex dropped to 18th byron dropped to 21st bowman dropped all the way to 28th all right so those are the big drops between qualif between practice and qualifying. Now, you can look at it the other way, too. But well, wait a second. Bowman didn't do too well in practice, but he sure made up for it in qualifying. And sometimes that might be a good thing, and sometimes it may not. But you have to understand where you are, and that's why the trends come in handy. Because the trends are telling you that yeah, a lot of times practice matters more than qualifying, and here's why. But Watkins Glen, and, and especially road courses, you know how difficult it is to pass and all that other stuff. But it's real important to start up front. 
and especially when the numbers tell you that and so it does matter that Bowman was fast in qualifying and not so fast in practice you'd still rather give Bowman the edge because of that all right so let's wrap this up quickly with some other uh, important notes I'll pop back up the qualifying charts as I do that so again Chastain does not have uh, like a history here at this track uh, that uh, makes me want to go his way because he's first or second. Matter of fact, if you look at uh, his overall, where is, uh, what do I have? Chastain's numbers at Watkins Glen. Uh, he has, uh, has never had a top 10. And has never led a lap. He was 35 to 1. His odds are going to drop big time. He's probably going to be 10 to 1 lower, I would guess. I'll tell you right now, if he's not, then put some money on him because he deserves to be in that 10 to 8 to 1 range. But if you're getting 12 to 1, 14 to 1, hey, put some money on him. Why not? That's that's a, that's a little disrespectful. I don't care what his history here is at the track. By the way, his teammate, Suarez, has had pretty good success. 50% in the top five. Okay. As a matter of fact, 50% between top and top fives in both cups and Xfinity. So maybe Chastain learned something. But look, do you really want to bet on Ross Chastain? He's not a playoff driver. He's had all sorts of bad luck this year. He's not been able to prove that he could do anything this year, uh, you know, for the entire race. Uh, and Martin Truex Jr., same thing. I mean, are really going to trust Truex? Now, the good thing about Truex, again, would have to be the odds. If you're getting good odds in Truex, then I'm willing to give him a little bit of a break. He was 16-1 to 1 the other day. I just don't think those odds are going to hold up. And I'm not willing to bet Truex at 8-1 to 1 or around that number. If you're going to still give me 12, 16-1, I think I'm going to take it. But I'm just not, I just can't. Even though he's been really good here lately, a 6.2 average in his last seven with a win and two runner-ups. But you, I, I need good odds. Uh, Van Gisbergen, I just can't take. I've said countless times why. And I'm not going to take him here either, especially because he's fast again. He's going to wind up. He might wind up the favorite. He really will. I mean, he really could. I might even bet that he's going to be the favorite. And just like Chicago, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, Bowman, though, definitely. Look, we liked him the other day. We rolled the dice on him at 35 to 1 or whatever he was. It was a pretty high number. You're not going to get that now. Okay, so that's going to drop. But how much does it drop? Well, I, I, you know, I'd be okay still if you can get something better than 15 to 1. If it's if it's much lower than that, then I'm just, nah, no, no thanks. He's never done anything at Watkins Glen. But I'm willing, to, I'm willing still to go with him if I'm getting still pretty decent odds, even though I've lost, you know, a big number like 35. Sindrick, now this is CJ's second pick. Keep And, and again, Sindrick was, let's see, there was one, two, three, four, only five drivers that were uh, out of the 10 that were fast uh, top 10 speeds in both qualifying and practice. And Cedric was one of them. The others were Chastain, Van Gisbergen, Logano, and Gregson. McDowell just missed it. He was 10th and 11th. But Cedric is still potentially a good play. Once again, it depends on the odds. If you take a look at the odds on Tuesday, he was getting an excellent 35 to 1. So CJ was able to take advantage of that. Uh, he's only raced here twice, 13th and 16th. But he's got a win in the Xfinity Series. He also has a third place finish at a three in the Xfinity Series. And he's looking good here. So, look, same thing like Bowman. They're both with 35 to 1. They both look good here. Cedric looks better fastest in both sessions so his odds should be better and I think both Cindric and Bowman are probably still going to give you good odds because they're Cindric and Bowman they're not you know Larson and Hamlin uh, AJ uh, he has a really good history here but he only has one win okay so you just got to keep that in mind only one win and he's only led two laps in his last five he's only had 60 laps led in his career at the track but his last two finishes were second and fourth. He was 10 to 1. I don't think that's going to change much. I, I kind of put AJ in the same boat as Van Gisberg, and I just can't take the guys. I don't I don't trust their teams as much as the driver. And also, 
it's just like it's so hard to pick these drivers in a well this is the they only have a couple of chances to, to win each year this is it it's just asking a lot the odds are not with them as you can see i mean if you keep going with aj you're gonna lose you lost almost every time he, he made money for you once but he lost money for you in the long run so again, I think it helps that Byron was 11. So I still feel good about that. Uh, and I'm sure uh, I, I'm sure CJ should feel good about that as well. Uh, and uh, CJ's long shot was Blaney. Keep in mind, again, Blaney had a good practice run, so that's important. Even though he, you know, his overall history in road courses are just okay. But wow, he had a big number the other day of 45 to one, and Ryan Blaney. Uh, it looks like after last week, he might be ready to start turning it on again in the playoffs. And my top pick was Christopher Bell. And again, he did not look good at all. Okay, he did not. 17th and 25th. Uh, his odds were 11 to 1, three top 10s, uh, and, and, and uh, only one top 5 and two Xfinity series, uh, one top 5 and three Cup series. So he's just been okay. He's been good, solid, but he hasn't let any laps. Okay, I was willing to take the chance on him because the odds were good. But now he looks a little slow. He's in a Toyota. I'm not so confident. I, I definitely uh, want to jump on Byron. So uh, I definitely feel better about Byron. And I still feel good about, of course, Bush. I don't really, you know, McDowell's interesting, but no way at 12 to 1. He's interesting because he led 14 laps and 17 laps in the last two years on this track. Okay, so that's something. And he's pretty decent here, tenth and eleventh today. But I just can't take him at twelve to one. Those are not. I'm not getting anything there. Kyle, he has an excellent history here. We talked about him. I know a lot of that happened several years ago, but still, this is Kyle Busch. He's a hot driver right now, and you were getting eighteen to one. So yes, I still feel good about Kyle. I knew he was twelve to one on Tuesday, but I was able to get him at eighteen to one uh, early this morning. And and like I said too, Elliot definitely. I, I, I still like Elliott because I think you're going to get good odds, just like you were getting decent odds on Tuesday. And Larson, no. Can't take Larson. Not when he starts uh, way back in the pack here. And the fact that uh, if you look at it, even though he's won twice in the last three, keep this in mind, he's only led 38 laps in nine starts. That's not a lap. That is just not. And his average in nine starts is just 12.2. Uh, 26 last year okay and and he was a heavy favorite last year so is he still going to be six to one yeah and he should be even though he's starting 20th but i'm not going to break a trend to go on a low price okay so keep that in mind if you're going to break the trend of being in the top six you're not going to do it on a low price that, that, that to me it doesn't make any sense to do that and and you would be doing that with van gisbergen Actually, no, no, wait. You know, you wouldn't be doing it with Ben, ben Gisbergen. He's actually uh, one that you would be, if you're going to do it, you would want to go that route. But again, I don't go down that road. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're deciding between Van Gisbergen and Larson, I'm definitely telling you, telling you to go with Van Gisbergen. Especially since he is, like Larson, driving a Chevy. And don't forget, AJ's in a Chevy. Bowman's in a Chevy. Uh, who else is in a Chevy that we like? Byron's in a Chevy, Kyle Busch, Elliott. So I'd rather go those guys because you're getting much better odds. And I still think Bowman uh, and Cindric are real solid long shot plays. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Keep in mind, Chevy drivers have won the last five races, and they've all been Hendrick cars. All right, so remember that. So if you decide to go away from Larson, you could go at Elliott. You can go at Byron. It's been two Larson, two Elliott, one Byron. So what do you think? Two Byron to make it look really good on paper? Or maybe maybe it's two, two, one, and one with Bowman. Next week, we are going to talk about a Saturday night race at Bristol. So that means this show will be available on Friday here on Prime Sports Network. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Also, check us out on our Motorsports channel. <clears throat> uh, Mystery Caution. 
And uh, check me out over on the R Lads football channel. That's where I talk football. It's football season, so if you're a football fan, check that out. Give us a try. Uh, and also, same thing over, I've got uh, a show I produce over on Playbook Experts YouTube channel. Check that out. we got a show we uh, produce uh, every Wednesday for you college football and NFL uh, fans. So uh, you can check all those other channels out as well. And, of course, our horse racing channel, uh, Horsepower PSN. Uh, that's uh, been a, a pretty good success so far this year. We've got a lot of good stuff going on there. All right, I'm out of here. Good luck on Saturday. Actually, good luck next Saturday with Bristol, but we'll be talking to you on, t on Tuesday. Don't forget to preview Bristol and update the playoffs, keeping in mind also that that's the last race of the first round of the playoffs, so a lot's at stake. Good luck tomorrow at Watkins Glen.